Hey everybody, welcome back. Thank you for joining me for another weekly edition of Z Real Estate's discussion on real estate. All right, this week, how do you buy real estate without any money, cash, or really any fundamental knowledge? Is that possible? Is that just a scam? Can something like that really happen? Yes. How? How does it happen? Well, deals like that are predicated on the deal and not on the borrower or any other factor. Okay, so let me explain the difference. In a normal scenario, a property might be worth $200,000, for example. And let's say you want to come in and buy the property for $200,000. You might have a, um, a, you know, a modicum down payment. Any lender that you go to, to try to get a loan, will do their best to vet you, to qualify you. In hopes of what, guys? Guesses? In hopes that you do not default. They don't want a default. They don't want an REO. They don't want to deal with the headache of foreclosing and the cost involved. All so they can what? Get their original investment back if they're lucky. Now, on a hard money scenario type loan, implicit in this scenario is the assumption that the deal is great. Okay, so going back to the scenario where the property is worth $200,000, let's say the property is worth $400,000. But again, you're only looking to acquire it for $200,000. Let's say you've found this phenomenal deal and you got somebody that says, hey, look, I will give you this property for $200,000, but give me the money within the next week or two. Is it possible? Yeah, actually. You can go up to virtually any lender and say, Take a look at this awesome deal I got. Now, obviously, they're going to have to verify the deal, make sure it's real. And if they do, now what's their hope? That you do not default? Wrong. As a matter of fact, the actual and exact opposite will apply. They will hope, you know what, here's what we're going to do. We're going to give this guy the money. And hopefully, if things go good, we'll never see him again. We will never hear from him again. And we, the lender... We'll get to foreclose on this property. Yeah, it's a pain in the ass. Yeah, it sucks to foreclose. Yeah, it's going to cost us a lot of money. But hey, we're not doing this just to make a little 7 or 8%. We're doing this to make that guy's vision come true. We will take his place. He had this awesome idea. And it turns out he's right. We ran the numbers. The property is worth 400000 And he really can buy it for two hundred. So we helped him buy it. And if we don't hear from him again... Guess what that means? We will take the property. We will then go and sell it for the 400000 it's worth. And we, the hard money lender, will make the profit. So it is easier to get the money on a hard money loan, providing that the equity is there and the deal is there. Why? Because again, the thinking, the rationale on, on the lender's part is that you do default. Now, in that spirit, as maybe on American or as difficult as that might be to understand, um, it's actually a lot easier to get a loan because now the loan is predicated on the deal, on how good the deal is and actually has nothing to do with you. That foreclosure that you had three years ago is not going to come and bite you in the ass now when you're trying to buy this property. That short sale that's ah just two, two months shy of being fall, falling off your credit or being wiped off of your um, your credit scoring doesn't apply here. The mortgage delinquencies you have, the car repo, the money that you loaded to your mom, none of that matters here. Guess what else doesn't matter, guys? DTI, debt to income ratio. So when you're buying a loan, I'm sorry, when you're buying a property and you're using OPM, other people's money, specifically hard money, if the deal is good enough, generally speaking, the rationale on behalf of the bank has nothing to do with vetting you in hopes that you don't default. It has to do with vetting the property in other words, if the property makes sense, if the deal makes sense, if the money is there, we'll give the guy the money and hope he does default. Because if he does, what's the worst that can happen? We get the property back and we stand to make a huge profit by jumping in on this guy's place and flipping the property instead of him. Does that make sense? Would any of you guys do that if you had the money? Absolutely. All day long. All right. So that is one phenomenal way. To buy a property with really no knowledge, credit, or money. Um, however, at the, at the end of the day, even though something is possible, it's like they say, that doesn't always mean it's a good idea. So not having knowledge is probably one of the easiest things to combat. <clears throat> especially now, especially in the age of YouTube. A lot of you guys 
have more knowledge now, just four minutes and 52 seconds after you started watching this video than you did before you started it because of um, information like this, because of YouTube, et cetera, et cetera. So what does that mean? What, what am I trying to say? Do your due diligence. We were talking about a property that's several hundred thousand dollars and you're interested in buying it? Do your homework, guys. Make sure it makes sense. Um, and if you want to know what some all-time, you know, biggest mistakes can be, talk to a realtor. Why? Because I guarantee you, any realtor has already made that mistake for you. Generally, realtors are the ones that make the most mistakes when it comes to flipping properties, buying rentals, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Why? Because in their mind, here's the thinking. Oh, I'm an expert at this. I don't need to read this prelim. I don't need to review the HOA documents. I don't need to look at what the insurance policy covers. This is what I do for a living. After all, I'm an expert. As you can imagine, that thinking is a recipe for disaster and will necessarily get you into trouble as it has for many realtors time and time and time again. I can tell you myself, I own at least two properties that I wish I've never heard of. Uh, properties that I couldn't sell if I gave them away. Um, properties I'm stuck with. And to make it even more complicated for any of you realtors or, or lenders out there that have ever tried a short sale, how difficult is it when your occupation is a realtor or a lender? Generally speaking, the answer is, ah, you should have known better. You should have known better. You are the expert. Anyway, it's hard. It's real hard to get a short sale or a loan mod or anything like that when you're a licensed broker or when you're a licensed lender. So our mistakes tend to haunt us a little bit longer than the mistakes that you guys have. But the point of all this is we know them nonetheless. Ask us. We'll tell you what mistakes are mistakes that you should definitely avoid at all costs or what mistakes are bad in your mind but actually really aren't that bad and might even be a blessing in disguise should it actually happen to happen to you. So um, next week we're going to be going over the importance of being bankable, how to get loans the traditional way, and what needs to happen in order for you to do that. Hint, hint, hint. It has to do with Uncle Sam and taxes. Ooh. All right, guys. Thank you for joining me. And uh, remember, my information is here. I can be reached anytime, all the time. I know some realtors say I'm always working. Call me anytime. And when you call them at 3 in the morning, they say, what are you doing, man? I'm sleeping. Truth is, I really am always working, guys. So if you don't believe me, call me anytime and find out. All right. So until next week, make it a great week, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me at Z, Z Real Estate. You can reach me anytime. Have a great week, everyone.